So once you're looking at you know, what somebody's needs are, what kind of outcomes they hope to achieve, and areas in which they may require support, and you've kind of explored you know, through brainstorming, through just problem solving, through being creative and looking at innovative and alternative service uh, options, you also have to consider in what settings those services may be made available. It's really important to point out that in this rule and in the CMS regulation as well, that individuals must be afforded the opportunity to receive services in non-disability specific settings. So that's critical. Then CMS requires and expects that we maintain documentation of all those alternatives provided. So if, if we saw, we walked into a county board and determined that 80% of the population receiving waiver services in that particular county attended facility-based day services and were served in group home-like settings, we and or CMS would certainly look to see what alternatives were offered to those individuals. We're certainly not making a judgment that any of those things are wrong or saying that people can't receive facility-based services or saying that people can't live with peers with disabilities or in group home-like settings. That's not what that means. Those are still options for some people. But what we have to focus on is making sure they hear the broad array of options. So what else were they offered? Were they offered the ability to stay in their family home? Were they offered the ability to live on their own? Were they offered the ability to live with a friend that they have chosen in an apartment building or other place? So we just have to be thinking about things much more broadly and thinking about setting options kind of the way we think about our own lives. I mean, most of us did not leave our parents' homes expecting to live with another adult peer that we were not in a relationship with for the rest of our lives. I mean, that's, that's kind of a non-traditional um, living arrangement. So what other options were made available to people receiving waiver services who happen to have developmental disabilities? 